Islam. They wanna know about Islam? We'll give them that one. They wanna know why I'm Muslim does? We'll give them that one. When they wanna hate on our deen? We'll give them that one. Then, kun feridan, عش بفخرين في الحياة لا تبالي. They sort of didn't know what. Yeah, they kind of they were getting around to understanding that they were protons and neutrons. That eventually, um, that became evident eventually. But they, but he was able to show that the nucleus was composed of the dense part of the of the uh, atom. So that killed that theory. Um, and so, and then so so that so the Rutherford theory of the atom is, itself has undergone further falsification and refinement. Yeah. So, so that's how science works. So, because it's working on the material reality, it can't have any say over non-material things, yeah. really. So, what it means then, you cannot expect scientists who are theists yes. to produce publications because if it's all to do with falsification, what are they going to falsify? That's right. Because you're producing some indications yes. for the existence of a creator, not yes. non-existence right. of something. That's right. Okay. So, so you can you can you can maybe. Look at philosophy, philosophy, and uh, social sciences aspects of religion, if you like. But they don't. But those are separate. That's a separate discipline, very separate discipline from the hard physical sciences, shall we call them that? Yeah, or the natural sciences. Yeah, they are very different disciplines, and they have their value. I mean, there's one quite well-known Muslim scholar who says that the, one of the faults of the Muslims in the present era is that they don't do social sciences. I'm talking about in the seminaries. They don't. They read text, but they don't then look at the, the product of what they then make pronouncements on, what that effect has on the society, because they don't do any of the social studies. Now, as a scientist, you would do. You, you, you would you would get an undergraduate or a postgraduate to go into a lab at some stage and do work in an area and they would do experiments around maybe a key area that the, their supervisor has a particular interest in but what you don't find is a similar thing with with such shall we say um, mullahs or muftis or sheikhs they don't tend to tell their their guys their, their post, usually the postgraduate students I have to say they don't tell them go out into the field and find out what's the result of this train of thought you shouldn't be expecting Muftis or chefs and others. We need academics. So there are academics yes. in I, I institutions. I, what I, Muslim what, what, academics. That's, that's are fine. they not doing that? Is that what no, you're saying? No, they're not. Generally speaking, there, there is a new generation who are. They tend not to be in the Middle East. They tend to be in Britain and France, Germany, obviously the developed countries, and particularly in America. Um, that's that's true. They are truly academics in the sense that they've had a, they've gone through the a non a traditional, from an Islamic point of view, I suppose you would say, a Muslim point of view. They've gone through a non-traditional education where they've gone through BSc, you know, bachelor's, master's, PhD, um, and then if they've been hired, then they, then they become an assistant professor, post postdoctoral fellow usually, assistant professor, associate professor, professor, or, or equivalent in here, reader and professor, senior lecturer, reader, professor. Um, <clears throat> So yes, that, you're right. Those are those are doing the job that the guys in the seminaries should have been doing, but aren't because they are constrained by their own worldview, I suppose. Or Would you another way, should we not say they're constrained by their academia? Yes, they because may. their particular academia would not um, grant PhDs and so on. Because it's not all seminaries who can give PhDs. True. Well, what theological seminaries? Yes, We're talking about Islamic ones. Yes, yes. And even if they did, yes. there may be some that does exist. Would they be recognised yeah. in other bodies uh, yes. of academia? Yeah. So it won't. seems like we have two branches. Then we have yeah. a kind of a traditional conservative mm. seminary arrangement now, plus, in, particularly in the West, a uh, academic approach now to Islam, which is very, very interesting. So this is why I'm coming to ask you about Sharia, yeah. because I think this has a bearing on on what this, this discussion is having, it will, will hopefully come around to addressing this interesting idea, some sure. of these interesting So ideas. What's, what's your interest in Sharia, if I may ask? Well, um, I, I mean, I hear the word a lot, I read a lot about it, and I think there's a lot of confusion, both from Muslim and non-Muslims, particularly because the Islam, shall we call them, that Islam haters, I don't like the word Islamophobes, but those who hate Islam and have a vested interest in downgrading it or bad-mouthing it, they are using the term in a, in a derogatory sense, 
Um, and then on the other, that's one, one extreme. The other extreme is certain Muslims are saying that the Sharia is divine law, right? So those are the, I think, from my understanding, those are the two extremes. Okay. So from what you have studied from the academics, yes. let's focus only on the academics. Yes. Um, whether you've read their tertiary materials yes, or their primary articles. Indeed, indeed. What is Sharia in your understanding? Uh, so there's a range of opinion. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, it ranges from divine law, essentially, quite equal, you know, Sharia. I, I mean, there are one, I can't quote the author, but I could probably find, yeah, I could probably find whose name it is. But Sharia equals, equals divine law is one equation. And variations on that. Uh, all the way up to um, people like. Khalid Abu Fadl, who, who says that Sharia is, um, I think, I mean, I'm kind of interpreting him now, but my understanding is that I think he thinks that some of it is rooted in divine precedence law, but a lot of it is man-made, man-derived from the, from the human intellect. Okay, so it's, and, and the, the one thing that overrides everything is seems to be the idea of a pathway to the watering hole. Yeah? That's a linguistic meaning. That's a linguistic meaning, yeah. So what about your understanding? Because you are one of several dais, aren't you? Yeah. Yes. But it doesn't what is make, your... But what, it doesn't what, make but us how, specialists no, I in Sharia that. or any no, other but you field. Have, but hang on, you have, to, you have to somehow discuss your belief with the non-Muslims, yes? Right? What, how do you, when somebody who's a non-Muslim comes to you, how do you say, how do you describe to them Sharia in a way that makes them convinced that it isn't something to be afraid of, for, ex for example? Because, you know, there are different competing ideas, yeah? Yeah, yeah it's one, okay. So if people understand Sharia to be only criminal law, yes. then this is where the problem yes. starts. Yes, exactly. Because you've already narrowed down yes. to certain aspects of a life's affair. Right. You can have personal law within your own home. Okay. How you deal with your family members, yes. the interaction that you have, the interaction that you have with other people, which doesn't involve crime and punishment. Right. All of these interactions. So you're are saying dealt with you're saying about the, prayer and and fasting and things like that are part of the let's say yeah. Sharia. So if you want to broadly categorize in one of your individual interactions with God and what God asks of you. And other than that, which is people or environment, whatever it might be. So you might hear people describing, scholars describing ibadat and mu'amalat. Yes. Yeah? yes. So one is to do with your Worship, worship and one is to do with your actions yes. of any kind, right? Yes. So Sharia is not divorced one from the other. It's right. encompassing okay. way where you're supposed to follow yeah. and conduct your life. So even if it means that when you smile at your brother, yeah. that becomes charity, yes. and charity is worship. Yes. So that is part of Sharia. So what, what would the classical scholars believe Sharia was? They're though? never restricted to one or the other. Yeah. There's always been a broad understanding. Yes. It's only people who are focusing on certain elements, yes. they say, oh, we're talking about Sharia law here. Sharia law here, right? Yes, yeah, okay. You, you can but, see yeah, Sharia yeah, is <laughs> is law. law. Yeah, it's this, yeah, yeah. This idea of it being some legal um, definition, yes. Yeah, I think is what you're saying. So, the I think the you know emphasis occurred in recent times because yeah. of all the actions that we see yeah. in the matters of criminal system, yes. justice system, yes. where there's a punishment in people, yes. whether it's cutting of the hands of a thief or you know stoning an adulterer or you know But I understand those are very extremely, if not impossible, rare events. Yes. Very rare events. Very rare events. If Something you like two hundred hands I'm not were sure. chopped in I, I, the I won't be able to give you period a of the figure. whole of the Islamic uh, caliphate. Yes. I won't be able to give you a figure but yeah. um, somebody told when, me this. When but when he's so you know, a smaller number, it tells you that the, the was amount of ever, evidence... Was anyone ever stoned? I mean, apart from the famous hadith, was any where the woman confessed, you know what I'm referring to. Was anybody ever stoned outside of that period of time? I think there are some examples. Really? Some examples. I, I, I can't be exactly. Extremely rare, though. Is that very extremely rare. The reason being, um, I think there's two main reasons. One is, if Islam catered for all the yes. needs, you don't need to go to the alternative to commit that act. And secondly, when the acts are committed, 
the high level of evidence that is demanded yes, of it sure. to establish four, four, four witnesses to establish the crime. Male, blah, yes. blah, blah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. What, going back to Sharia, did you find the, the word oh, yeah. in, the, in the Quran? Do you know there's only one occasion in the Quran where it appears? The example I was going to show you about... It's 4518. Okay, let's have a look. The phrase is shariat min al amr. <laughs> What's the root word for shariat? Do you know? You tell me. No, I'm asking. I'm asking. No, you tell me. No. So when I when I search, it's right? Shara, shara, ah, uh, ah, uh, isn't it? Shara, ah. Uh. So it's. So you have the word sharia. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to your word. I'll show you. Yeah, 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 sure. So it was what? Which one? Surah 14. 45, ayah uh, 18. Oh, you've got the same uh, version of the Quran that I've been using. Sharia, I think, so Sheen, Ra, Ya, Ain, Taim, Al Buta, right? Sharia, yeah, that's it, Sharia. Mm -hmm. Do you know when that was revealed? Not personally, no. It's a Makan. Yeah, Surah Al Dafi. That's, that's a Maki Ayah. So it's a Makki Surah? Yeah. yeah, yeah, but not exactly in what. No, we know it's a Maki what, Ayah. What occasions? I can't tell you. Yeah, um, no, I can't um, either. I haven't, I haven't read in the Kathir's sure. uh, so, so, when we're talking about, look, sometimes a specific terminology may be derived from a concept, uh, which yeah. is all embedded sure. throughout the Quran. Yes. So, Sharia is not something that has been totally uh, non existent in the Quranic concepts of what it should be. If Allah says, for example, you know, obey Allah, ati Allah, and ati Rasul, and obey the messenger yes. and those who are in so authority the question, amongst you. So now the question is, it's a Makkan surah, a Makkan ayah, and did the Prophet ever use that term Sharia in, the, in, his, in his hadith? Is it reported in the hadith? I think you're just only focusing on the word. No, 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 let's, I'm not, I'm not. Let, let's focus. It's a really important point. Sure. Right? Because if you do a word search in the, in the hadith collections, no, it occurs most of them are most of the sur sorry most of the hadith where the word sharia is used by supposedly by the prophet it's used in a non-legal sense or they are weak hadith which are not accepted by albani and, and other hadith uh, criticizers muhadithin i think you call them furthermore the Sahaba never used the term, ever. What did they use? They never used Sharia. What did they use? I'm not sure what they used, but they, ne they never used Sharia. It's never been recorded in any of the speeches of the Sahaba, including especially the Khulafa Rashidin. This I can look into because... Yes. It was Would never you like, like a reference to the journal article? Yeah, no problem. Fine. But Here we go. The focus on the legal and non-legal aspects the Sahaba and the Tabi'een and the Tabi Tabi'een after them, yes. they implemented what we call Hudud. That's right. right. The hudud, I'm not arguing against that. No. Is the Hudud part of the Sharia or from the Sharia? From your understanding? The point that I'm making, if you think about it, and I'm not, I'm, the Hudud is part of what we would call Muslim law or fiqh. Okay? And what is it based on? It's based on the Quran, yeah. yeah, and indeed also the Hadith, because the the um, instructions, the fine instructions of what, how you do it, where it applies, all that kind of stuff, is mostly found in the Hadith. That's not the argument. The argument here is that the word Sharia is being misapplied, misused, because it was never used in a legal sense. Okay, that's right? what um, that's what I mean, you were telling me. I yes. can look at the reference and, and look into it. No problem. I think you'll enjoy the read. Yeah. I have a, a copy here, if you bear with me. Have you read any reviews of this particular article? Oh, it's so new, it's not been reviewed yet. Okay. <laughs> I'm giving that's you almost, thing, I'm giving you hot off the press stuff. Okay. You want to take a photo of this, you mm -hmm. can, because it'll give you the journal title. It, you know what's best, I've actually got this as a PDF. If you give me your details, your swap details, I can email it to you, because you've got to spend money to get this. Let me take the, the graphical details. So the author, yes. Mohammed Farouk from, he's from Bahrain. Bahrain. He's so an, he's, he's an economic, so, so, economist. So he's, he's arguing that the Sharia was never applied by the Prophet in a legal sense, nor the companions. No, he's not saying that. He's saying that we're using the word, misusing the word. 
Pakistan. We're misusing the word. Okay. okay. He's not saying so. That's a, that's an obvious criticism. Oh, he's one of these progressives. He's a modernist scholar. He wants to re redefine the whole of the core of Islam. No, he's saying that there is fiqh. There is hudud, of course. Mm -hmm. Nobody could deny this. There is a Muslim law. You can call it. You can even call it Islamic law, but you should not call it Sharia. Interesting. Yes. Interesting. And the uh, evidences are yeah, very, very. But I don't see how this is going to be any because, relevant. Because guess why? Because you got you got Hezbo Tahrir, you've got Ikhwan al Muslimin, you have Jamaat Islami, you have ISIS or ISIL or whoever, whatever the hell they're called now, all saying the same thing. We want to implement. We want to uh, enact or, or establish the the Khilafah to implement the Sharia. So you're saying. The understanding these groups are bringing are in contradiction yes. to the traditional understanding. I'm saying that if you look at, at the prophets, uh, but firstly, there's no ijma on anything. There's no ijma on anything. Careful. What do I mean by that? I mean that anything, on anything that is not obvious. So, so in terms of fiqhi things, that Ibn Hanbal famously wrote that there's no ijma on anything, right? So one of the arguments against defining or redefining parts of terminology in Islam is that no, all the scholars, there's an ijma on the sharia, there's an ijma on what constitutes this and that. And what there's did the never scholars been say a, about there's this never been a, There's never been... Let's assume, and because yeah. I haven't read this quote. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I, think it's accept, I think it's accepted. And is this statement accepted to be representative of the scholars of his time before and after? I think it's a general observation that he made, which is but, that people who claim there's an ijma are, are wrong. That's what he's saying. Okay. But there is, but there are ijma. Yes, there are ijma. Yes, of course. But now we're talking about on fiqhi things, where about which there can be disagreement. Not about about no nobody, no Muslim is going to say the Quran. You know that there's any scholar that doesn't. No, we're talking about ijma as a source of yes, fiqh. That's not a source of fiqh. People okay. think it is, but it isn't. Um, so that's so you're basically. So there are several publications that have discussed Ijma in detail, yeah. and and they all come up. With Don't you think these are fringe views? No, they are. They are. You're right that the scholars of the seminary scholars that we were talking about earlier think and propagate this idea. Of Ijma. So traditionally, there is. Tradi if you studied, which you may have already, traditional fuqaha and their fiqh. And the madhahib. Yes, I know that. So it's one of the so-called sources. So, so, it's not so-called. If you have a madha, madhab, which clearly identifies a source of yeah. its okay. jurisprudence and its yes. laws that's going to bring yes, yes. from it, yes. ijma me. is one of them. Me. Uh, it's not, and I'll tell you why. How do you define? Okay, I, you answer. 